because this is this is an interesting webinar for us. Uh, I'm on the DigitalOcean like traditional side of things, servers, um, hosting websites, all that good stuff, databases. And here comes uh, James with all the fancy new new. So <laughs> this is really like a big learning experience for me because I'm not too far into the AI space. But yeah. I see a lot of people mentioning open AI. Has, how many of you have worked with like uh, closed source AIs? <laughs> hey, shout out Raydeck. Love to see that. Oh, some people did fast AI. That's cool. Let's give it another 30 seconds ish. I think there's still some more people petering in. Um, but let's start. Let's set a hard, hard start time at five after the hour. Cool. One more minute. Close, a lot of close source in here. Uh, that's good. Uh, people are going to know what we're talking about then. And if you don't, you'll still be able to follow along. Don't worry. Got a cool interactive tutorial for for everybody, really. Ugh. Greg, probably but you need the data first. Good data science, fast answer for you. <laughs> um, all right. I first think, LLM last night. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. I think we are probably ready to get started here. So I'm going to share my screen. Can I get a uh, confirmation from everybody that they're able to see my screen right now? You are good. Good to go. All right. Cool. Let's jump in then. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, hello and welcome to this DigitalOcean and Paperspace webinar uh, on building generative AI applications using DigitalOcean. We have a ton to cover today, um, so let's just jump right in. Uh, my name is James Skelton. I'm a technical evangelist with DO and formerly uh, with Paperspace since the acquisition. Um, been here the last two years, and I work mostly on content related to the blog and webinars. I'm joined by Chris Sevilleja. Uh, hey, everybody. Advocate, let you go. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Let me just jump in. Um, hey, I'm Chris. I am one of the developer advocates. I've been here now. This will be my fourth year at DigitalOcean uh, this month. And uh, I traditionally leaned more to the uh, front end, full stack type development, a lot of droplet, a lot of app platform databases, pretty much everything but Kubernetes and AI at this point. So I'm really AI. looking forward to this one. Now you're an AI developer. Um, yeah, after this, I will be. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Let's do a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today um, before we actually jump into the content. Uh, first, we'll begin with a presentation introducing Paperspace by DigitalOcean. Um, specifically, we're going to discuss its utility as a cloud GPU platform and break down what Paperspace products make possible in the realm of AI development. Uh, next, we will introduce our generative AI for today, Stable Diffusion and overview it. Uh, we'll briefly discuss some of the versatile capabilities of the model, and then we'll do a high level, all the way down to low level, overview of how the AI actually works to generate images. We'll conclude the presentation um, and then jump into a code demo, um, but I'll show you how to set everything up on paper space, including selecting the best GPU for your stable diffusion needs. Uh, in the demo itself, uh, we're going to sequentially walk through all the steps needed to sign up for Paperspace, start and set up a notebook, uh, and uh, and then get Stable Diffusion running. Uh, then we'll show um, some of the built notebooks that we have for this presentation, showing how to train a LoRa for fast uh, for Stable Diffusion. Excuse me, Fast Stable Diffusion is the name of the repo we're using specifically. Check them out. The last bin, really cool product. I'll. Uh, our project. I'll be sending links later. Uh, then we'll show how to work with the stable diffusion web UI in the browser um, and also show how to work with it using the fast API uh, backend uh, to create an endpoint. Uh, we'll then conclude the presentation with a neat uh, custom application that Chris has developed on DigitalOcean app platform using the endpoint. Uh, can I get um, just... Uh, I, 
I forgot to mention this. I really like B's for thumbs up and D's for thumbs down. Can I get a B that we're all happy and good to go? Uh, and then what I'll does jump B in. stand for? Oh, it's a thumbs up. Lowercase B. Oh, I see. Okay. Lowercase D would be a, it doesn't really work. I guess it'd be a P for thumbs down. All right. Everybody's happy. Cool. I just wanted to put in that B thing. Please, um, you know, if I ever ask yes or no, you can use that. It's a lot easier. Cool. Let's jump in the presentation. I'm going to pass it to Chris. All right. So uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with DigitalOcean itself. Um, DigitalOcean stable of products has grown over the years. And we've been around for about 10 years now, 11 maybe. Um, but we started with the good old Droplet, which is our server offering. Um, let me know if you've ever used our droplets before. Uh, myself, when I started coding about 20 years ago, I was deploying things to droplets. So being here at DigitalOcean is really cool. And seeing how much they've done since droplets, uh, adding in Kubernetes functions, databases are a really big offering from us, uh, our marketplace one clicks, and our storage offerings. Uh, recently at platform and functions for kind of getting uh, more managed services around and all of our networking products as well. But what we're here to talk about, uh, thanks Mark, Droplet and App Platform. Uh, what we're here to talk about is GPUs. Thanks. No, that was the perfect click, James. <laughs> so these are all of our uh, data center regions. We have 15 data centers across nine regions. And currently, we are offering GPU in three of those locations. And uh, just to interject here, if you have any questions, please throw them in chat. We love seeing questions. Uh, we'll either take them as we go or save them for the end, depending on the question. And this is being recorded. So... Uh, I should double check. I believe we'll be able to email you or post this on YouTube, the recording. Um, James, Mike Cotterman with a question. Uh, is GPU in all three NYC locations? Do you know that? Yeah, I'm not sure about the question. As far as I know, we just have the, the one data center. And yes, they're all GPU enabled. I mean, it's unless, yeah, I mean, there's the, yeah, yes. All the paper space. So the three with the GPUs are the paper space legacy data center locations, and they all have GPUs. I can say that. <laughs> uh, Adam, droplet since 2013. That's amazing. That's awesome. Um, cool. So let's jump ahead. I'm going to save some of these for a little bit later. Um, the DigitalOcean side of things on the front end where we deploy our application, James is going to do awesome stuff with uh, paper space and deploying um, stable diffusion, yeah? Yep. Um, but on the front end side, we're going to see how we can integrate with a deployed stable diffusion on paper space using App Platform. And App Platform is our platform as a service where you can pretty much just take a GitHub or any Git repo and deploy it. And we'll manage the deployments, the rollbacks, the uh, scaling of uh, all that infrastructure, security and alerts, all that good stuff. So everything you would expect from a modern like platform as a service. And today uh, we'll be deploying from a GitHub repo and seeing it live. Exciting. Thanks, Chris. Um, yep. Next, gonna talk a little bit about paper space. Um, so, I imagine Paperspace is probably a little newer to y'all as DigitalOcean customers than uh, the DO products. Uh, so let's go high level to low level talking about what Paperspace does. Uh, in short, Paperspace provides GPU power for AI model training and development at scale. It's really easy to develop um, your AI with uh, something like, you know, you can build a proof of concept on a notebook. Um, it's really easy to train. Um, the notebooks tool also makes it really easy to train. We also have our core machines, which are fully enabled um, Linux, Windows, whatever OS you want. Uh, uh, virtual machines you can access on the cloud. Those are also GPU enabled. So training, simple and deploy. We have a deployments uh, product, which makes it really simple to convert models into scalable API endpoints. 
Um, so going a little deeper with this, um, it's built for AI developers. Um, specifically, we want to point out that we've got uh, our strengths lying in GPU acceleration. You have access to all the most powerful NVIDIA GPUs, including H100s. In the near future, they're, um, they're actually being brought online right now. And all the different uh, data center and quadro GPUs you could ever need. Uh, we have pre-configured deep learning containers pre-built to help facilitate users get started with whatever project they're on. So you can spin up a, a, a gradient notebook with all the packages you need already installed. Um, uh, specifically, Gradient uh, is our machine learning platform. It's where you can find the notebooks and deployments and workflows and all the different uh, workflows are an Argo workflows related uh, product, by the way, to make your uh, streamlining of AI development easy and collaboration sharing. Uh, it's it's ridiculously easy to share your work on Paperspace thanks to the teams and the shared um, notebook settings. So you can easily work with different developers on your team or across project spaces um, on your work. Next. Um, and to talk about how it empowers AI developers, it's ridiculously simple to use. I mean, I, I'll tell you this, I came on to Paperspace uh, as an AWS SageMaker user pre previously, and it blew my mind how easy it was to set up and use. And that's why I applied to this company. Uh, predictable costs, you're never going to get any um, surprise bills with us um, with per second billing for the more powerful GPUs. You can also save up to like 70% of compute costs compared to uh, competitors. As I mentioned a moment ago, it's built for teams. So collaboration is really easy and it's extremely secure and reliable. Our um, cloud uh, compute is monitored 24 seven with a really, I, I mean, my favorite support team I've ever had to interact with for my own problems, let alone work with. I mean, they're really good. So get all the support you need. Um, yeah, this is just a another slide talking about some of the different uh, myriad use cases you can have for paper space, you know, everything from AI, ML, e-commerce, gaming, uh, blockchain, managed hosting. There's some that aren't on here that I should mention, like graphic design, anything you could use a GPU for. Um, I think Paperspace is really nicely set up for. Uh, I know I've built a PS3 emulator on it myself. Uh, and with that, we are past the overview and intro to Paperspace and DO, and now we can talk about our generative AI we're covering today. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, today we're gonna be covering Stable Diffusion. Uh, you could argue Stable Diffusion is probably the a premier open source image synthesis deep learning model. Um, there might be an argument for Pixar Alpha, or you know, depending on your idea of what open source is. I mean, Dolly three could be in a few months, but right now, Stable Diffusion is the winner. Uh, the it was the follow up work uh, to release pre trained versions of the latent diffusion model, uh, which is the 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 architecture that Stable Diffusion is based on, uh, which was also created by the researchers at CompVis, which created Stable Diffusion. And it was initially released in August of 2022. Uh, the models were all trained on images and captions selected from the Leon 5B data set. This is a set of 5 billion images and corresponding captions pulled from the internet. Um, this is also the source of much of the consternation with the model as it's taken a lot of artwork and uh, let's just say not safe for work things into it. And it's made it a bit of a controversial state, but it is also what gives its extreme versatility is this massive lay on data set that it came from. And uh, today we're gonna specifically be focusing on the ninth iteration of this model from the, uh, the, the main uh, creators uh, called Stable Diffusion XL. Cool. Uh, in this next slide, I've got this cool GIF, which shows all the capabilities of Stable Diffusion. Here we've got in painting. So we got these, these uh, different drawings that it's casting on to. Here's another example of in painting where they're removing people um, from backgrounds. Here we've got super resolution, which is upscaling. I know a little bit of Photoshop, and it would take me hours to do any of these. That's the beauty of it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> now that they have this generative fill thing in, in Photoshop, it's even crazier. I mean, you can 
basically take an area like they've outlined here and then fill it with whatever you want. You could, you know, say Batman instead or something. <laughs> um, it's a truly amazing product. I mean, the versatility is absurd. It knows so many different concepts and objects and styles um, in the Fusion of the image and text data in the latent space allows for some really interesting um, and creative implementations of those. Of course, control over that is another problem, but we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that later. Um, sorry. What's interesting to me is like it said, you said August of 2022. Um, it didn't really hit my radar until like this year. Um, was it, what, when do you think it like got really widespread a good question. Um, probably with the release of 1.5, which is still the most popular version of the model, um, which was like the fourth iteration, I think, um, or the fourth publicly released iteration. No, it's the third. Mm -hmm. They did 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5. Um, that would have been in March, if I remember correctly, maybe a little earlier. Um, I feel like everything kind of just broke onto the scene this March of this year. That's when the chat gpt, GPT api came out yeah so we had three foundation model releases at that time there was chat gpt uh whisper also from open ai mm. and stable diffusion one five um one three and one four were still quite good but one five showed a pretty significant uh increase in capability uh for the record, everybody, uh, uh these model versions I'm talking about are all accessible. You can go to huggingface.co and search stable diffusion. They have all the different versions on there. Uh, it might be worth experimenting with those. Um, but let's continue with the presentation in the interest of time. Um, so how does diffusion modeling work? Uh, well, stable diffusion is based on a family of models called diffusion models. As I mentioned before, specifically, it's a latent diffusion model. And the way diffusion models work is by successfully adding, uh, well, I'm sorry, during training, the way they work is by successfully adding Gaussian noise to the training image data. And um, it's conditioned with text or images to not be completely random. And once the data is like completely noise, that means you're adding um, basically static to it. The model then learns, learns to completely reverse this process called denoising. So it's Taking this, this is probably a better example than this one. This is actually an image to image, um, but pretend you know this is complete static here. It takes the static and then it slowly draws out the features from coarse to fine from that static. And it's the ability to kind of, it's the ability to do that that allows it to mesh all the different concepts together. Um, yeah, and uh, I should mention the denoising process aims to iteratively recreate the course defined features of the original image. Um, yeah, I wanted to put that in specific words. Uh, okay, next. So, qu oh, quick question from chat, if, if, if it's a quick question. Can you set it up to detect malware on images? I have no clue. I mean, it's not a... Yeah, it's not really looking at the image, so to speak. It's not like... YOLO or something like that, where it's doing object detection, object localization, object identification, or or even classification. What it what it's yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a way to do that, but I think that would be a kind of a fundamentally different implementation of it is detecting malware. It's really gotcha. versatile though. Like somebody trained it on MIDI files and it was able to regenerate MIDI files that could be then turned into MP3s. So. It can do a lot. Um, I'll, if I remember to find that project, I'll send it to you all in the chat later. Um, but Stable Diffusion is is pretty capable. But to my knowledge, I don't know about anything about malware. Malware, excuse me. Okay. Um, so I mentioned latent diffusion models. Um, since Stable Diffusion is one, we should get a little deeper into it by talking about those. In latent diffusion models, a compressed image representation is used instead of the image itself, and then work to reconstruct the image. Just like um, the popular clip model, which I realize I wrote this out of scope, excuse me. Clip is a very popular model for marrying text and image data. It's used in so many different things as a foundational model. Um, 
but yeah, long story short, it's got text and image data encoded together. And that's why I reference it this way. Uh, the encoded inputs in these models do not have to be restricted to one object type, and they can be a mix of text and visual data. And that allows for the textual and image encodings to be encoded in the same subspace. This is possible because the latent diffusion model has access to the real images during training and is able to learn the right parameters by applying noise to the image iteratively until it reaches a completely noise state and is unrecognizable. Then it learns to reverse that process in the same way. Um, and we've actually got a nice little uh, description here. So if x of t, or x sub t, I should say, or God, what that be? x t prime? Doesn't matter. The big T, x, uh, that's going to be our started noise state. Um, so when you are generating an image in a text to image scenario, uh, if you're in an image to image scenario, you'll start with something like this. But in a text to image scenario, you'll start with this complete noise state. And at each step, so t uh, minus one representing the step, uh, you will iteratively add in uh, more noise, which uh, if this is kind of a physics thing, but basically it, it constructively uh, builds things with that. Um, it's poorly worded, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, it's just... <laughs> The addition of noise over time allows you to recreate the features from the original um, the original described objects in a form that corresponds to the prompt we input it. I hope that's a little more clear. <laughs> um, yeah, but long and short of it, that's how that's how latent diffusion models work. So, because stable diffusion has been trained on such a wide variety of different objects and uh, images from Leon it can do this super wide variety of different things. So I've got some example images down here, uh, going back on the slides a little bit. Here we got Darth Vader riding a bicycle. An astronaut playing a pretty poorly made piano, if you ask me, in space, unicorn in Iceland, uh, oh, what would you, a steampunk otter, and a bear yeah. astronaut. I mean, these are, these are all things that do not exist in any capacity. There may have been some sort of art of it somewhere, but stable diffusion will not have memorized all of that. So these are novel creations made through the understanding of both the image and text data as they relate to each other. Um, and that's the power of stable diffusion. Cool. So you're saying we get to mess around with it today. Yeah, uh, I got a cool demo set up, um, and in the next part of the presentation, we're going to walk through all the steps to get started and sign up for Paperspace, run this stable diffusion demo, and uh, we have a extremely low code uh, web UI for you all to use. So if you wanted to generate, I don't know, party cats, it's going to be really low quality because I'm using <laughs> uh, Excel and it's supposed to be 1024. Uh, here we go. Let's just juice up the quality a little bit so it's not weird looking. That didn't help. Yeah, here are awkward party cats. Um, but you will all be able to generate whatever you want later. Um, and I'll walk through the steps for setup. I'm very curious why that looks so odd. Oh, well, questions for later. Anyway, um, so uh, as we were saying, we're all going to do this ourselves, and you're going to learn how to do it. Um, so the question should be on everybody's mind, how do I pick the best GPU for stable diffusion? If you were to go to um, the Paperspace consult, um, this is just my private workspace. Everybody, uh, when you sign up for, by the way, signing up for Stable Diffusion is really easy. Yeah, Sasha, I'm, I'm not including the refiner stage in this. I didn't include the SDXL stuff. Um, we do have the refiner available if you want to use it on this. Um, I suppose I could turn on the refiner. I had it work without the refiner before. I'm actually super curious, so excuse me for getting distracted, everybody. I do want to confirm if this works. Yeah, it's still got the wonky initial shape. I, the thing I was talking about was how it's cartoonish. Um, I would have expected realism. Sorry, back to topic. Um, it got so, closer, I think. They they were flat cartoony before now, there's like gradients on them. Yeah, there's a bit of depth, I see. I don't yeah. know. Um, it was just a bad prompt, really. Um, so sorry, signing up for paper space is really easy. Um, you only need your email and password basically to sign up. And then once you do, um, 
you can access all of our, we have several free um, GPU products like um, that you can run through the notebook. And I'll actually provide a link later that you can just click on to launch this uh, Stable Diffusion web UI with just one button. That does look a bit nicer. Um, but uh, this is how you would create a notebook normally is you would, uh, you've got this create notebook button in one of your projects. Um, then you could choose one of those templates I mentioned earlier. We have these pre-built containers that have all the packages you need to run this stuff. Um, they are actually a little out of date, but look out in the next week, we're gonna be updating them actually. Um, and then we have the options for choosing a GPU. Currently the free GPUs are at capacity. Um, the, only, the only ones that are free to everyone are called uh, these ones, free GPU explicitly. If you are a growth plan or pro plan customer, you can access more free machines. These are free at cost of the membership um, and also subject to availability. But for $8 a month, you can access an A5000 unlimited. So I consider that a pretty solid deal. Um, anyway, uh, all you would do is select your GPU, um, which I'll, I'll talk about how to do that later. And then just fill in uh, using this advanced options button, uh, the workspace you want to work in. And in our case, that would be, oh, come on, let me click. There we go, sport. Well, that's Ben slash PPS. And I'll, um, like I said, I have a link that I'll be sharing with everybody that automatically does all these steps for you, except for the sign up. You still have to make your own account if you don't have one, but you don't need to go through all the notebook creation steps. Cool. Uh, sorry, I got off topic, but um, once you signed up and you are uh, in the in the space to make your uh, notebook, um, the, the question should probably be, what is the best GPU for your own use of stable diffusion? Uh, first of all, when selecting a GPU to run on, uh, paper space with stable diffusion, uh, the first thing to keep in mind is, are you going to run it for inference or for training? Today, we're going to be showing both. Um, and training explicitly requires more. Um, you can think of like, a, at least for stable diffusion, a good soft, this is not a hard rule uh, to keep in mind, but you can think of it as about 2.5 times required VRAM for training as required for inference. Um, so in this case, we've got, um, a recommendation of eight gigabytes of VRAM for training the V1.5, I mean, for inference with the V1.5 models and 16 gigabytes for the Excel models, and then double that if you're going to do any fine tuning. Uh, furthermore, the newest and most, uh, powerful GPUs are always going to be the best choice. And that's because they have all this additional technology. Um, shout out to NVIDIA. They make some really cool stuff. Um, uh, particularly uh, in the latest um, that we have available on Gradient, which are the Ampere series GPUs, you'll get the advantage of the latest tensor cores, which used automatic mixed training to accelerate processing. So uh, that basically means you can have different degrees of um, uh, precision with your numbers formatting. Um, so you could have FP32 or FP16, those are full precision and half precision. Um, specifically, uh, tensor cores allow for mixed precision work. Uh, then there's RT cores, which are ray tracing cores. These are uh, just a specialized version of uh, tensor cores, really, for our intents and purposes. But if you're in gaming or graphic design, this will be much more important. In our case, not so much. Uh, structural sparsity. Uh, I, I didn't talk about this, but AI models can have millions of parameters. Um, like uh, stable diffusion has 860 million unit parameters and 123 million text encoder parameters. Uh, so new GPUs need artificial sparsity to um, accelerate training and inference and the Ampere GPUs have that in spades. And finally, NVLink. Um, this is more relevant if we're gonna do some sort of, you know, uh, training, multi-node training kind of things, but NVLink allows for accelerated par parallelization excuse me, that word always comes out bad, of training across multi-GPU systems. And um, it's really improved with each generation of microarchitecture. The Ampere ones are a huge step up from the Volta ones. Um, cool. Uh, 
finally, I've got our links. Um, everybody, uh, want to give a little explanation before I copy and paste all this out to you. Uh, if you click on any of these links, which I apologize, I'm now realizing are hard to see. Um, you will be able to open up the stable diffusion demo that we have through uh, Fast Stable Diffusion. Can you drop that in chat also? Yeah, I will in just a moment. Um, I just wanted to pull this up. So this is based on uh, the work of um, the last Ben for his Fast Stable Diffusion product. Um, it's, I really, really recommend this as the best way to use it. Um, so yeah, uh, that's what we're going to be basing this all on today. Sorry, I distracted by chat for a moment. And when you actually run it, you'll get into a page that looks like this. So let me get those links for you. Oh, excuse me, I got to go out of the presentation to click on it. Meeting group chat. Cool. Um, you have to double click them to make them work, but... Um, see in the zoom chat i mean sorry uh when you click on it you'll be taken to this page um so this is the free gpu one um i i just want to point out right now we are at capacity for the free gpus so if you run this you will be redirected to a c4 cpu machine uh this will still run stable diffusion but it'll take about 200 seconds to generate an image uh, my recommendation is to check back later for free GPU time or sign up for uh, a paid machine. We have them at priced as low as 50 cents an hour. I'll be running this demo on an A100 80 gigabyte machine. This is one of the most powerful available. Um, so bear in mind, that's why things are running so quickly. <laughs> um, but yeah, once you click on the, the link, all you need to do is hit start machine here and uh, choose private workspace. Uh, unless you have another team you would like to work in and it will begin spinning up the notebook. Uh, and that should take about a minute and a half. Um, but keep following along with me while that's loading. Um, everything is so simple to run. You, you don't need to be doing it at the same time. Um, let's jump into my notebook. Uh, so, real, real quick, a couple questions that I want to call out. Yeah. Um, as far as the recording, will there be a recording? Yes, uh, we will email you a link to the recording, uh, depending on when Zoom like has it all processed and everything, either like tomorrow or the day after. So you'll get a recording. And uh, we're also thinking of posting it to YouTube, and we can send you a link to that as well on the DigitalOcean YouTube channel. Yeah. And one more question, um, and I'm not sure on the answer to this. If I have a DO billing account, do I need to create another billing account on paper space? And are there plans to merge? My understanding is it hasn't merged yet, but it is in the near future and they're trying to. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Recent acquisition, but they are working on that every day. Okay. It seems that login with DO is possible right now. Cool. Uh, uh, Garam, there is a pre-built image to text too. I'll show that in a bit. Okay, uh, in the interest of time, we've only got eight-ish minutes left. I wanna make sure we cover everything. So I'm, it's gonna be a bit rapid fire, but everything is built into the notebooks already. So uh, don't stress too much if it seems like I'm rushing. Okay, so first, uh, now that we've gone through, uh, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. Setting up the notebook, cool. Now that we've gone through everything, it's time to move on to our first actual uh, coding demonstration, and this is to train a LoRa. Uh, this is using that same The Last Ben repo I showed. Seriously want to give them credit. They've done a wonderful job putting this repo together. Um, and running the SDXL LoRa trainer is really easy. Uh, the first thing you want to do is run these first two cells. Um, these will um, actually install the dependencies you need to run um, Stable Diffusion on your notebook and get you your Stable Diffusion Excel model. You don't need to do this because we actually have it already as a mounted volume, which uh, basically allows our users to access any of these um, any of these resources that we put up. Um, and you can actually put your own in if you want at the team level. But point is, you don't actually need to download the SDXL model, but run this just in case so it actually gets the variable assigned. 
Then um, we're going to create a session. This is just um, it's just a placeholder for the name of the actual uh, Laura. I think I already have an example session, so I'm going to call this example session two. Um, next, we have the instance images uh, here. Um, you have the option to upload images if you want, or there will be there will basically be a little JavaScript modal that when you run this. Um, actually, let me. Currently, we're having a bug with JavaScript, so it's actually not loading in that uh, view. So I'm pulling it up in here. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, so just got to rerun these really quick. Yeah. It gives us an option to choose some images from our local. Um, yeah, so here's a screenshot I took of Yolo if I wanted to use that as my image. But uh, I actually have already added some images in here um, and pre-processed them. This is in a folder, is it fold two? Excuse me, I think it's just a formatting. I wanna make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, fold out. This is pictures of me at different angles, turning my head so that I can train this, this uh, Laura model. So uh, just for the record, if you want um, a quick and dirty way to train a Laura model, take out your phone, take a video of you turning your head side to side, crop that video into a square, and then use FFmpeg to extract the frames. And you have a Laura training data set of yourself. Real easy. Um, okay, so what I can do is direct this towards my folder and it'll upload those to the session. Then we have an option to manually caption the images if we so choose. Um, so I don't know, a red haired man with freckles and a mustache. Cool. Um, and then, you know, you. You'd have to do that manually for all of them. And I'm not so sure, <laughs> that smile is hilarious. I'm not so sure how much I'd recommend doing that if you have 50 plus images. So, um, and I'll actually show this later. There is a way you can automatically generate these captions using the Stable Diffusion web UI. So um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, it's a little roundabout way to do it, but you can do that and save yourself a ton of time on captioning. And finally, we have the train Laura. Um, this, this code cell is what actually runs the training. Uh, we can change the number of epochs for the unit and text encoder. Uh, epochs are just the total number of times uh, everything um, is, uh, I'm sorry, the total number of times that the model looks at every single image or every single piece of text. Um, and you, if you're like me and you're using external captions, you're going to want to change this value to true, and then you can run it. Uh, I've actually already run mine um, in the past, so we're not going to run it right now, uh, just in the interest of, you know, making sure we can actually show everything. Um, let's go back. And um, since I already have my pre-trained one, oh, where is that? Here we go. Since I already have my pre-trained one, I can just... Um, show it in here. So I've got this Laura. Oh, sorry. Uh, there's a that very last code cell you could run in uh, in here. I apologize. I skipped right over it. You can test your train model by running either of these two code cells. Um, I recommend the A111 methodology. It's a it's what fast stable diffusion is based on. Um, that's the one we're going to be covering today. There's also the comfy UI method. So keep in mind, that's how you can launch these. Uh, from the main notebook, this has almost exactly the same stuff, uh, except it has some instructions on downloading control nets and things like that. So this is the pps-a111.ipynb, and that's what I launched Stable Diffusion from. Um, I want to make sure that's running. It seems like the kernel might have stopped. I, I'm actually having trouble telling. Yeah, OK, it looks like the kernel stopped itself. Um, that that's my bad. I, I clicked I clicked on something wrong and that made it happen. So we have to wait just a few moments while this runs. Um, but you can see how it all spins up. So we're installing all the required stuff, downloading the model if needed. 
Um, you can actually change your default model right here if you want. Downloading LoRa's. So if you have a LoRa model um, on Hugging Face or something like that, you can download it directly to your uh, LoRa link. I think it also works with Civit AI, but I may be wrong there. And then choosing which control nets you want to use. Control net allows you to use another image to provide structure to your generated uh, images, kind of like a scaffold. So if you had a person like this and you told it, you know, generate a ballerina, it would generate a ballerina like this. So control net is, is useful in that way. Okay, cool. Glad I rambled my way through that. Um, so now that we've got our Laura train- Can you zoom on that just a little bit? Uh, on this, um, yeah. How's that? Is that Great. better? Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Um, I've got a train, Laura. I made a few. <laughs> um, we can just generate, oh, sorry, I did it again. It needs to be 1024 by 1024. It defaults to the stable diffusion 1.5 resolutions, but if you're using Excel, it'll look real ugly. Uh, 5.2. Yeah, it's mostly got me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can, um, the web UI is really cool. You can change your resolution, how many sampling steps you want to take, how many images you're generating at once. So here we go up to full resolution. That's That's just me, spot on. <laughs> that uh that last one was really bad though um yeah so it's almost i've overtrained this laura for the example um overtraining is basically where you make a concept overrepresented in your weights so it's it overrepresents your outputs with that feature so um no matter what i do i could type a ballerina in russia it's still just going to be my headshot. So keep in mind um, how many epochs you're training for and how you do that, because uh, it can significantly affect the power of the LoRa. Even if I go down to like 0.1 here, it'll still, um, it'll probably still be very heavily rep. Oh, no. Okay, cool. So it's not all the way. Um, I'm very curious if my facial features are going to show up on these ballerinas, though. <laughs> Everything is skeleton. That's a nightmare, isn't it? Uh, I mean, look at these legs. Wow. Terrifying. Um, yeah, so stable diffusion isn't perfect, by the way. As you can see, there's some artifacting going on in all of these images, but it's still really, really good. Uh, Next, we're going to talk about uh, how to use the fast fast API backend of this. Um, but really quick, I mentioned there was a way to pre-process images. This is how. So I had a folder called fold2. Um, I made it a full destination called fold aft. And I set um, in here to keep the original size, create flip copies, and use blip for caption. Blip is another AI model that will look at your image and detect what's in it and caption it. So um, this is how I got my automatic captions for training it and how I avoided manually captioning 50 images. But let's look at the API backend before we look at Chris's awesome application. Um, by the way, actually, before I do that, Chris, I'm DMing you the the the, the link to the, the link. Uh, cool. yeah. Um, Cause I've, I've restarted it a few times. Um, Keep in mind, every time you restart this, it will generate a new link. That's because this right here, I believe, is randomized. This is your cluster on paper space, but this is randomized. So uh, it will be a new one every time. All right, sorry, API time. Um, so all uh, fast stable diffusion is built on Gradio, and all Gradio applications have fast API built in to their backend. And that means it's possible to use Postman or some other competing product to directly query the endpoint uh, from whatever source you want. And Chris has gone above and beyond and made a little example on app platform, but I just wanna point out, this is how you can do stuff like make Discord chat bots. Uh, if any of you were on that, I think it was called Unstable Diffusion Discord. That was like really popular when, um, when uh, Stable Diffusion first started for sharing resources, uh, they had a Discord chat bot that was built this way. So fun facts. Um, I will now um, 
pass off the word to you. Let me know if you need me to scroll or change anything. Chris. If, <clears throat> oh, yes. Um, So the main API endpoint, and I wouldn't call it, uh, you said I went above and beyond. I did not. Um, <laughs> what we would call this is um, just grabbing the API endpoint and um, using it to uh, do a post request with a prompt and getting back the image that is generated. So the API endpoint here is this uh, slash stable diffusion API, SD API slash V1 slash TXT to IMG. So let me share my screen and uh, we'll mess around with this. And let's see, did we miss anything in chat while we were here? Can you use custom models and extensions in deployed apps? I'll go through and respond to them while you do this because I think we're past time. I want to make sure we... Yep. Okay, so what we have here is um, a really simple index.html file. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do here is uh, we have a form. We have a place to add a prompt. I'm going to click generate, and then it will go to James's backend, send the request, and grab the image that is output, and then we'll display it. So. Nothing too fancy here, but this is kind of showing the start of what like a paper space backend, uh, a DigitalOcean deployed app on a front end can look like. And we're trying to merge the two into like uh, everything under one roof kind of thing. So here I have all this. None of it's wired up yet. So I was going to plan on doing that um, here on stream. So we'll go here and uh, I'm going to Click generate image is this function. And I'm going to give you a quick overview of what this looks like. We're using Tailwind for the styling. This is just one HTML file. You don't really see that too much these days. Everything's like giant build processes and whatever. But I'm going to use Alpine.js, which is a very simple JavaScript library. And this is our Alpine component. We have prompt, which is just a string uh, base64, which is the how the image is returned from the Stable Diffusion API. And then I have a function to generate an image. Cool. Uh, let me open up chat over there, too, in case anything needs to happen. And as I scroll down, the main things that we need to look at is this form, which has a submit event here, and it'll generate an image as soon as we submit the form. And here's our text area, and here's our button. So those are the main things, but really where we'll be working is in this function right here, async uh, generate image. So uh, what I want to do is let me pull up the activity bar here. Um, what we'll do is James called out using something like uh, Postman. I'm going to use Thunder Client, which is built into VS Code even though Postman has a VS Code extension now. And I'll click on this one. And let's replace this entire URL with the one James just sent me. Let me double check that I have that right. I didn't copy it. So right now, this is... The uh, connection between the two is this API URL. And the way that you can secure it is having cores set. So we can say, oh, only these domains are able to access it through an API call. Let me delete all this. Cool. So I'll send this request here. And this is the new API that James gave me. <clears throat> And this is one of the images that gets returned. It returns as base64. So we'll have to either base64 decode it or just show it in the UI. 
But overall, I'm going to copy this URL request, and we have some questions. Is this only for prototyping or full-scale apps? Uh, possible to use a custom domain? On the front-end side of things, I would say this is ready for production, right? I think the front-end side of things isn't where you would look at the bottleneck. I think the back-end side of things with choosing the right GPU, um, making sure that there's availability on the back-end, that's the move. Um, but right now, all in all, all of these are pretty much going to say, hey, I want to await. Well, let's go const response is equal to await. Um, fetch. And I'll pass in that URL right there. And then I'll say method is a post request. Um, let's go for our headers. Oh, thanks. Autocomplete. Content type. Accept. Yep. Cool. Autocomplete. And I'm going to pass in the body, which will json.stringify the prompt. And that's our entire API request here to the thing that James created for us. And then we'll say const data is equal to array res.json. And then we'll say const uh, this.base64. I believe it's data.images. And then the first thing out of that. This dot is processing is equal to false. So this is pretty uh, simple way to just grab the API call, get the data back, and then bind it, the image that we get back. So let's see if it actually works. I believe that's all we'll need. So let's go double check here. Um, let's do Darth Vader riding a bicycle. That was one of yours, right, James? I was oh muted, gosh. yes, sorry. <laughs> So I'm going to open up my terminal. Let's go for the network tab just to see that the network request goes through. Click generate. We're having a cores error. Um, James, we talked about this. What's happening earlier. again? Earlier. Oh, the, shoot. Allow. That, that's that's on me. Origin. That's on me. I I must have reset that somehow. Um, let me let me rerun. Sorry, everybody. That's uh, my bad. Do you want to share your screen and show how that's done? Uh, one sec while I find it first, because it's been... <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, it's been switched around. Um, at least you have it in Slack. Um, yes, and um, one of the questions is: it possible to use a custom domain? Um, while this is, while James is looking at the cores issue, which is kind of a security way to say, look, only local host or your deployed domain, or it can be your custom domain, can access the API. I'm going to go look at my DigitalOcean dashboard. And what you can do here is you can click Create an app right here. And you can deploy from GitHub, GitLab, uh, DigitalOcean Container Registry, or a Docker application even. And I'm going to click uh, Paper Space Front End is what I call this one. So the main branch, auto-deploy every time you do a push to the Git repo. And then I'll click Next. And App Platform, if you're deploying a static site, since this is just an HTML file, you have three free static sites that you can deploy. I'll skip to Review. And I'll click Create Resource here. So that's deploying the app. And then once it's deployed, we had a question about custom domains. You can add a custom domain here. And James just sent me a new link with the updated cores. So let me grab that. Yeah, uh, make sure you save your work, everybody, or else this happens. <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to drop it in right there. Perfect. So now let's jump back into the app, see if this is working. Okay. Uh, I kind of liked Bear Astronaut in space. So we'll generate. We have this coming through. No errors, which is nice. And I'll open that up. And there's our response right here. Check that out. Response is an object with images right here. Parameters, and you can even set all of the parameters through the API call, just like you saw in the uh, GUI that James had. 
What was that GUI called? Uh, web UI, automatic one, yeah. one, 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 one. There's four ones, web UI. Um, um, yeah, so that's kind of our quick demo here today as far as the front end is concerned. I know the back end, the API, the, the paper space stuff was the big focus for today. But this is just kind of scratching the surface at how you can integrate the two. Um, if you want to throw out any prompts into chat, I'll throw them in here and we'll see what it makes. While we answer some questions, um, James, do you have any customers you could shout out that are doing like a full DO deployment from paper space to DO? Not off the top of my head, sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah, I... Uh... Pretty deep in marketing myself. I could probably ask sales. They probably have examples, but no, nah, nah, not off the top of my head. Cool. Yeah, I'm actually oh. in the same boat. Um, but Mark, uh, can we do another app platform uh, seminar because it's grown over there? Yes, it has. I was here for the launch of that platform and a lot of new features. I'd love to do that one. <laughs> Uh, Jared just commented that it's pronounced automatic 1111 and it's blown my mind. Thank you so much because that makes so much sense. And I've been saying 1111 is forever and that sounds terrible. I'm pretty sure 11 one is a Star Wars character. Um, yeah. Oh, look how happy this go. guy. Yeah, uh, please throw more questions into the chat if you have them. Um, I, I realize we're 15 minutes past time exactly now. So if anybody needs to head out, you know, uh, I think we've covered all the main stuff, but please let me know um, in the chat if there are any direct questions. I'm, I'm happy to stay on for a little bit and answer them. Yeah, Mike says we should print this on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. Sorry, everybody. Let me get you those links to the repos. Um, how do I make my notes show up? Oh, God, I love full screen zoom blocking everything. Okay. I, I've meant to put these in like three times and then I just kept sending, I kept replying to questions. So I've got three links in there. Um, uh, let me put in another for the last bin. Uh, and here is the front end repo, which is one HTML file. I didn't even add a readme, I'm realizing, but that's that one. And then finally, here's that free GPU link to round things out. Lots and lots of links. Uh, will there be a video to rewatch? Yes, Daniel, there will be a recording. Yes, Dooley, there will be a recording. Yes, and uh, we will email you the recording and um, possibly post to YouTube. So if you're on the DigitalOcean's YouTube channel, um, you'll see it there. Mark, I'm just sending you them directly. Just make sure you get them. Um, Greg, great question. Can the email include all these links to GPUs, repos? I'm assuming all that good stuff. Um, yes, we can definitely do that. I don't see why not. I can definitely, definitely do that. Uh, want to say also say thank you all. Um, really enjoyed how many people showed up and how interested everybody was. It's really, um, yeah, really enjoyed that. Um, it's not, it's not often that you get to be so interactive with your um, attendees. Yes. Uh, yeah. I honestly, the chat has been fantastic. Thank you so much everyone it's tough when you do these and there's like no chat engagement so you're you're basically talking to yourself for an hour yeah i can do uh, that i can do that all day but i don't recommend <laughs> uh, my worst foe all ah. right akash with the with the prompt let's see if i can't copy out of zoom chat yeah i won't let you i've noticed that Cool. Thanks, everybody in chat. Uh, Paul, with a good question. Is this just a droplet with the GPU? Um, I'm not. I'm not familiar enough with droplet. I'm just. I'm too new to the company to uh, to 
give a definitive answer. Is a droplet um, like a like a container serve thing, or is it a proper VM? Proper VM. Oh, okay, then no, it's not. Because <laughs> uh, uh, this, yeah, we have gradient basically is a containerized ML ops platform. So you're not working on a, a full VM like you would in a droplet um, with, with all the bells and whistles. Um, Peter asked, can you add authentication in front of the HTML app? Yes, absolutely. You can um, really, you can build whatever front end at this point, right? Like whether it be a Laravel app, uh, a react app, add in your authentication. And as long as your front end can make an API call to a backend, um, which would in this case be stable diffusion, uh, you can build any front end that you, you want. Uh, Equipo, uh, are there any integrations for LLM, like for chatbots and paper space? There's no direct ones. It's, um, it's a, it's a general AI, um, platform for development and so we don't have any there's no chatbot api that you can just plug in you know decide you want to work with you have to do all the development on your own um yeah there's no plug and play sort of chatbots or anything like that well that's the first mis misstep the rest were all pretty good <laughs> it's kind of a tiger looks more like the grateful dead bear <laughs> um, is there an easy way to add DO specific login authentication in front of the HTML app? Interesting. I don't know what like that OAuth looks like. Um, the easiest way to do it would be to say like, hey, enter in your DigitalOcean API token or personal access token. So if somebody creates their own DO account, right, uh, they create an account, they add a DO token, then you can limit it that way. As far as like having the one click OAuth, I personally don't have experience with that. Because we added it to paper space, right? But I don't know if that's like publicly allowed. I don't know. Um, it looks like here. Oh, I mean, I have them sharing my screen when I bring it on screen. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like there's uh, an example here to have how to integrate deal with OAuth. That should be able to get the job done. I feel like I get ads for different paid packages that make it easy to integrate this kind of stuff too all the time. So Oh yeah. You talk probably, about like Auth0 is probably Auth0, Octa are probably the bigs. Yeah. So that's always an option uh, <laughs> if you're a more business minded person uh, rather than a coder. Uh what would your sell point uh versus Google based notebooks and collab be? Oh man, you can choose your GPU instantly. That's the sell point. Uh so I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. Gil, Gil, Gil um, asked, uh, like, why, why would you basically, why would you choose paper space over Google Colab? Um, the long and short answer is 100% versatility. Uh, I, if I'm one day working on something and I don't want to spend $8 an hour on a GPU or something like that, or if I only want to spend 50 cents, or if I want to spend three bucks 50, or if I want to get a multi GPU, um, that's all an option on paper space with collab. You have to pay for the most expensive, uh, pro plus account to get the ability to choose different machines. They only have three options. There's mul no multi-node and, uh, they also have compute hour limits. There is no compute hour limit on paper space. So, uh, yeah, it's a no brainer. If you ask me also, I'm pretty sure stable diffusion on collab was banned. I think I read about that a little while ago. Uh, let's see. Question. This was stable diffusion. Yes. Uh, I can do almost anything hugging, hugging face things on paper space. Uh, yeah. I mean, pretty much. Uh, 
you can you can clone any hugging face space onto paper space and run it. I mean, all all those spaces are doing is running, you know, running on some back end they have. Uh and what about competition with RumPod? Uh aren't you? I don't have a as good of an answer off the top of my head. I haven't used RunPod as much. They're a newer, uh they're a newer competitor. They've only been around about a year and a half, if I remember correctly, or maybe two, two and a half years. Um uh I, I don't really have a whole lot to say about the the run pods, the uh oh, what's the other one I always get? Um Lambda Labs. Um you're gonna get similar options to paper space, but less available machines, basically. Um if the pricing works for you, it works for you. But what I can say is paper space will always have a one hundreds, whereas they probably won't. So um noob questions. Paper space akin to a space on hugging face. No, paper space is more like the thing that runs the space on hugging face. Um, so the computer running the hugging face space would be like a paper space notebook, sort of. Um, can we use pictures generated from stable diffusion model for commercial purposes? Yes, there is no copywriting AI images, uh, at least in the United States. Lots of good <laughs> questions coming in here. Um, and running indefinitely and unreliant on its back end. Yeah, look into our deployments product. Um, that's exactly what you would do for that. Um, you have the option to keep a machine running 24 seven. Uh, no, say paper space is not limited to stable diffusion. Uh, please check out our blog. I've got like a hundred tutorials on different applications, um, and models. Uh, it's actually 600 tutorials to be more specific, but, uh, yeah. Uh, regarding building a model, is there any built-in way to point to a specific website to train on? Uh, no, you need to train that. You need to specifically harvest all of that data yourself. Um, uh, I'm in the process of making an article for this, Kisanev. Um, I've just been, it's been a busy week, <laughs> but I do actually have one in the pipeline for working on the API. Uh, Stefan, we are nowhere near the biggest data center in the building that we have our data center, so we wouldn't be able to heat anything. Uh, you should direct that question maybe to Meta or Google, Microsoft. <laughs> you know the ones, the ones with all the, yeah. Um, currently, it would take far more machines to do something like heat a building. Um, yeah. I, yeah, our, our, yeah, I mean, I'm sure our power consumption is more than, you know, like a household, but I wouldn't say it's, uh, even comparable to a minute <laughs> of running Facebook servers. Um, okay. Uh, questions are petering out and, um, I think we've covered everything. Um, any last thoughts, Chris? Yeah, I, I feel like, um, super informative and i think that a lot of people will start like getting the gears turning of what they can build can you drop a link to a place where we can like i don't know your twitter maybe follow you chat with you i don't do social media no social media um all right i have a linkedin um <laughs> i don't i i only use it when business time is around i guess you could say uh yeah i haven't logged into it on my new computer which I've had for gotcha. four months. So, so the should... paper space blog and paper space website is probably like the best place to go yeah. get more info. Yep. I mean, it wouldn't be too hard to figure out my email also. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> uh, if you ever want to email me, that's it's an option. <laughs> but yeah, I, I quit social media five years ago. Um, we'll have the recording uh, oh, sorry. I got a message on Slack just now and started answering it. Somebody asked on Slack if there would be a recording. And I started replying out loud. Uh, that's really funny. Um, <laughs> uh, 
That was really cool. Um, cool. Well, thanks everybody so much for your time. Um, I had a lot of fun. All these these interactive style webinars are a lot of fun. If you want us to have another one, uh, maybe do some other models or some other front end, we can definitely do that. But yeah, we'll thanks be back. Everybody. Thanks, Mike and Chat. Thanks, Akash. Yeah. Matt. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Akash. Thanks, Pat, Mike, Mark. Linus. Uh, <laughs> Linus, I'm not going to be sending copies of the pictures. Um, yeah. Take those yourself. You can you you just can release this course. as like a website, like call it everything is james.com. Everything is skeleton.com. Yeah, it's, 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 we basically <laughs> take this application, but it, it's got like a huge Laura on it. So no matter what you do, it's always my face. <laughs> it's always skeleton. <laughs> it always was. <laughs> um yeah thank you everybody let's uh i say we, let's just call